because you've got a youngin, so you've got somebody who could potentially be watching Go Go Corey Carson, uh, which I think is a great, great option for preschoolers to watch on Netflix. Because you know we always talk about Netflix for the adults, like what what can we watch? What can we watch? But we got kids too, and they need to watch stuff. So I wanted to ask first off the two of you. You are Pixar alumni. Um, and you know a thing or two about animation, I can tell you that much. But when did you guys decide that you wanted to join forces and form your own studio? Alex, you want to start? Yeah. Um, yeah, Stanley and I met at Pixar. Uh, I had been there for about 10 years. Stanley was there for five. And we worked on Finding Dory together. And um, we had an amazing time. We were working with uh, amazing talent. Um, Andrew Stanton's this incredible director. Uh, and we found that when we were working on that film, um, all the sequences that they put put us together on uh, just were, they brought the house down. <laughs> and so I think we noticed that there was a creative chemistry there that we had never experienced before. Um, and so after Finding Dory, we got the crazy idea <laughs> uh, to try and start a studio together, just because we you know we had seen the landscape sort of starting to change in the industry with Netflix and all they were doing with the originals. And we thought, hey, this is a great time to try and tell our own story. Um, so that's yeah, amazing. I, I, good kudos to you because uh, why not take your talents, take what you've learned, and try and and spread the wealth. Why not? And and Stanley, I'm wondering. I know we we know that um, Corey Carson. It's based on a toy, but tell me about the evolution of the show because it's not easy to sometimes take a toy, even though it's popular, and animate it. So what was the you know how did that all get started? Yeah, so it, it did start with a partnership with a toy company. Um, and when we were approached, we have a good family friend who works at this company. Um, but what we got really excited about was, you know, just these vehicles didn't have any characters uh, associated with them. It was just sort of a blank slate. And it was a great slate to build off of. I mean, what kid doesn't love trains and construction vehicles and fire trucks? So we started there, and then we really looked to stories from our own childhood. Uh, we really wanted to capture the essence of our childhood. And we felt like while there was you know, shows and entertainment around vehicles, there was nothing about a family of vehicles. And that got us really excited. And we felt like it was a show that should really be made and one that I would enjoy watching with my own children and I would love to share with the world. Yeah, I was going to ask you guys that because how difficult or challenging is it to um, give us a show for children? But, you know, sometimes, you know, parents just plop their kids down and like see in a half hour. But a lot of parents like to engage and like to sit with their children and watch it, too. So how challenging was it to make it so that the parents weren't kind of rolling their eyes going, oh, my God, when is this 30 minutes up, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, it's a great question. I mean, it's always challenging to tell a great story, whether it's for a kid or for an adult. Um, you know, great stories are really hard to craft. Um, so it, it's always challenging. Uh, I think that the benefit uh, for us is that, you know, we are our harshest critics and we are the main audience that we're trying to entertain. So if we feel like we're watching, you know, when we're writing the episode or we're looking at the storyboards and we're not laughing or we're not engaged, that's a pretty good sign that audiences of all different ages are also not going to be entertained. So we, all we really tried to do with the show was make something that we wanted to watch uh, and that we sure. found entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. Listen, my, my boys are older now, but when they were younger, I mean, Barney was the household show. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I cannot listen to one more song from Barney. Like, I'm going to kill myself, you know. But honestly, it's it, like, but this is this is very unique. And I, I just was wondering, for people who are not familiar with Gogo Go Corey Carson, um, you know, he, he's not your typical speed racer. Can you tell us a little bit about the show for, you know, and, and what we can expect, uh, what parents can expect for their children? You're totally right. He is not a little race car. He's not a little fire truck or police car or any of these, you know, super action cars that have a job. He's just an everyday kid who happens to be a car. And he lives in uh, the world of Bumperton Hills, which is an all vehicle world filled with the fun vehicles and, you know, every sort of vehicle that you can imagine. And the show really focuses on the family, which is the Carson family. So you got Papa, Mama, Corey, and his kid sister, Chrissy. And it's really about them sort of navigating through life and Corey's desire to grow up. Yeah, it's so, it's so adorable. What kind of um, 
uh, reaction have you had from kids or parents that have seen it? You know, what do they tell you? Uh, we've had a really, really positive reaction. Um, we've gotten emails from uh, parents all over the world. The other day, we got an email from someone in Turkey, um, somebody in Australia. Yeah, in Australia, in Germany, in in, um, in Brazil, uh, it's just mind-boggling to us that there's so many people from all different countries and cultures that are experiencing the show and really falling in love with it. Um, so yeah, we are so thrilled and just feel so honored that uh, we were able to make something that's such an intimate part of people's um, family life. The power of Netflix, it's everywhere, which is phenomenal. It's congrats to you guys for, for joining forces with them. I, I just want to ask one last question. Coming from uh, a place like Pixar, uh, honestly, a gift from God to be able to work there, I am sure. And I'm just wondering, there's so many talented animators. You know, I'm calling you from Toronto. We have a lot of people who have graduated from Sheridan who, who, who have gone on to become great animators at Pixar. What was the, the most important thing or valuable thing that you learned at Pixar that you kind of took with you and or will always stay with you? Uh, Stanley, why don't you start and then Alex, you can give me yours as well. Yeah, uh, we loved our time at Pixar. It is a great place to work with many great, talented storytellers, and we learned so much from our time there. We also, I'm a huge fan of Sheridan. Uh, great school and a lot of, a lot of great buddies, um, some of them who are working with us who graduated from and um, yeah, I think the, the most important lesson that I took was just the importance of sincerity in storytelling and really looking to your own personal life to, to find those stories and find honest moments. And when you're observing your life and when you're taking that time and portraying something that's real, if it's real for you, it's likely going to connect and be real for someone else. And that, that was very important to us in the show. So if you watch these episodes, when mama is dropping off Corey at preschool and she gets a little teary eyed, that's because I get a little teary eyed when I drop off my son at school. And it's very much the moment that we actually live out. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Alex quickly, uh, any, you know, things that you took that you took with you? Yeah, no, I echo everything that Stanley said. I mean, we had such an amazing time there. Um, I think the, the biggest lesson that I learned uh, that I've taken with me is, um, to really respect the audience. Um, you know, I think a lot of times when people are making animated content and it, you know, it's the, maybe the primary audience is kids, you know, you can, it's very easy to say, oh, well, adults don't get this, but the kids will like it, right? Um, or they don't know any better. Um, and that's, uh, you know, at Pixar, they never thought like that. They always thought, hey, you know, p the audiences are really smart, so you can't give them um, content or stories that aren't of the highest quality level that are, and that isn't, you know, that's speaking down to them. Um, so you always want to speak to them as your peer. And so I think that's what we try to do with this show is we, we always respect our audience. We always think that, you know, they deserve the highest quality storytelling, the highest quality content that we are able to muster um, with our, you know, our blood, sweat and tears. <laughs> Well, fantastic. Well, thank you guys for this show. It's adorable. And, uh, you know, people can, can check it out on uh, with their children, of course, on uh, Netflix. And uh, what a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk with you both this morning.